I'm Chris Aiken. I own and operate Webb Footed Kennels in Jonesboro, Arkansas. In the 30 years I've been doing it, everything's changed. Uh, number one, the, the dogs. They, the, they're so much better now than what they were. The techniques that we use, I mean, they're completely different than they were 30 years ago. And then the main thing is the technology. You know, <clears throat> all the train equipment we use today, I mean, there's no comparison to what it was 30 years ago. You know, in the retriever world, I think we're a little bit different in the fact that we actually train a dog to come to us, to go away from us, and to stop for us. What else is there? 90% of their hunt, they're under 100% control. We want total death, death stare, steal, be quiet, leave everything about you alone, leave everything alone. Don't move, don't whine, don't bark, don't anything. Just death statue type stare. And then we kill one duck in an eight hour hunt and we want them to blast off like something from NASA there and back and then remain completely still again until the next duck comes through, which may be six to eight hours away. You know, that's incredible what we ask a dog to do. Any type of dog training has to start with something very simple and build to something very difficult. Go by the steps. Train everything with a leash. Train everything with a leash, I'm gonna say it again, first. And then polish it. That's what you use the e-collar for. Nothing more, nothing less. In the way we train retrievers, it's, it's crawl, walk, run. It is progressive repetition. And when you do it in the right fashion, the dog has perfect clarity in his mind. You have perfect clarity in your mind. So that becomes a great team. He trusts you, you trust him, you know what he's gonna do, he knows what you're gonna do. It all goes together. You know, to train a dog to sit there while the birds are coming in and you're shooting is a very, very big task. And guys, there's nothing more important to hunt than a dog to be steady, nothing. When you're first teaching the dog to stay on a retrieve, which is being steady, you hold the dog back, you throw the retrieve, he's wiggling, squirming, you got him by the leash, and he's working you over like he should be, okay, because he's not trained not to. The bird gets to the top of the arc, you let him go and say his name. He shoots out there, gets the bird, comes back. He comes back, this time you, threw, you let him go at the top of the arc when you threw the bumper, top of the arc. The next time, you're gonna tell him to sit, kind of let him know you got that collar on him. You're gonna throw it, you're gonna let it go a little bit further. Remember, crawl, walk, run. Cut him loose with his name. He runs out, gets the bird, bumper, comes back. Next time, sit, you remind him you got the leash again, you throw it, get a little, get a little bit closer, almost to the ground, cut him loose. Let him say his name, let him go get the bird, come back. Then, sit, and everything's going pretty good there. Sit, sit, remind him again, sit. He's sitting there, it hits the ground. You send him. You'll be amazed if you'll do that for four or five days how that dog will end up learning to stay right there. Okay, now, let's say we're down a few, few days later on down the road, no leash. You throw the retrieve, dog breaks off, or all you gotta do is say no, nick him with a collar, he knows to get back to your side. Very simple. Now, here's the thing. If we're out in the backyard, it's you and the dog, and you're throwing retrieves, the intensity level's not that great. As we train steady, and we wanna always up the ante a little bit, we wanna make it more distractful, we want to make it more intense. We want to make it more, make that dog make his own decisions. So now you've got to add something to it. you got to add the gun to it. you got to add birds to it. you got to have a guy throw at a distance, have that guy hooping and hollering, you know, throwing. And you want to get on this dog. Getting on to a dog is not a negative thing. Getting on a dog is training. Have somebody, if you can, have throw birds, add the duck call to it. Add some hooping and hollering like we all have in a great hunt, a lot of fun hunt, which you're hopefully gonna have. When we're training a dog on being steady, we try to get him to break, okay? We're trying to ante up the, the level. And when we do, we're saying every different kind of command or different words, we may even say, hey, Brett, did you kill that? Yeah, I got it, Brett, did you see that? And I'm saying words that I may even think of that they may say during a hunt scenario. Did you, you know, did you shoot that cripple or, you know, hand me some more shells or if the dog's name is Boomer, I may say bullet, banjo, bacon. You know, do anything you can to challenge, that's the word, challenge that dog to come off that spot. And if that dog moves, Apply pressure. Remember, we're there to train. We're there to make him better than he was yesterday. 
but we're there to do it in a gradual way. And once we get that done, the next thing we do is we go into force fetch. We teach the dog to fetch, hold, and leave on command. Now, force fetch, the term sounds pretty brutal, but it's really not. It's a very simple deal. It's all about turning negatives into positives. It's all about their mouth. 90% of the people train it on the tailgate of their pickup, back of their ranger, their mule, whatever they got, in the freezer, in the garage. So do it where it's up off the ground. That way you can see the dog eye to eye. Everything's right here in front of you. It's very easy and it keeps you calm because this is not something that you want to lose your, your cool with. It's not something that you want to get upset with. This is all about repetition. Every day you've got to crawl, walk, run, chip, chip, chip. There's, this is not a one day session thing. But here's the great thing. You can do this in your garage. You can do this at nine o'clock at night. You can do it at five o'clock in the morning. You can come home and do it at lunch. You know, if you can run to the house, it takes five minutes. All you do when you're doing force fetch is you're, you're putting something in their mouth in the beginning, Pet and love, pet and love, pet and love, pet and love. You make this comfortable in their mouth. Once you do that and they're comfortable with that in their mouth, then you start adding pressure. We can do it with an e-collar on real low intensity. We can get in there, put, put it on one, hit the button right there. Dog knows this bumper goes in their mouth. They get petted all the time. So when we start putting that negative pressure on there, putting that thing in front of their mouth, you roll it in there. As soon as they do, you start petting love, petting love, petting love. Then you quit, hit the button again, put the thing in front of them, about the third time you do it, they're gonna put their mouth on it. You pet and love, pet and they're like, man, I get the collar on my neck, I put it in my mouth, they turn it off. So now we're gonna start putting it a little bit further from them where they gotta reach for it. Then, you, then once they start doing that, a little bit further. Then they'll goof the whole deal up, they won't go for it all, then you gotta scoot it back up here. And then you, can, and you get it to about four, five, six days into it, you can actually lay it on the tailgate, tell them to fetch so they don't do it, hit the button, they'll reach over and pick it up. And that's what you're trying to do. Now. We want that dog to fetch on command. We want that dog to reach out and grab hold of that bumper when we tell it the word fetch. We want him to hold it. We don't want him chomping on it, rolling it, cigar holding out of his mouth. We want him to hold it in the center, in his mouth, at our side. Okay, don't chew it, and when we say leave, we want him to give it to us. Keep everything easy, put a lot of reps on this. People ask me, how long does it take to force fetch a dog? About 20 sessions with us. Reps is everything in force fetch. Reps, reps, reps. And you're gonna have, you're gonna have, say, a third of the way through this thing, you'll say, man, that dog's not doing any better today than it did today, Friday, than it did on Monday. Who cares? Just keep doing it. Just keep doing it, you know? It'll finally come around. <laughs>